All right, welcome back to Rounds Eye Restoration, everybody. My name is Chris Fisher. Next to me here is my 1964 Triumph TR4. But today, instead, we're talking about my 2021 Frigidaire refrigerator. All right, so like many people, I have a inexpensive refrigerator for overflow in my garage, a refrigerator on the bottom, freezer on the top only has a single temperature control that's controlled from the refrigerator and all that happens there is it pumps the cold air up into the freezer there's a little vent that you can adjust in the freezer to control freezer temperature well it's becoming winter in new england temperatures in the garage are getting colder and colder so therefore the refrigerator doesn't have to work as hard to keep itself at a cool temperature since it's only monitoring the refrigerator temperature once it's happy with that it kind of shuts itself down and you're not pumping that cold air into the freezer section anymore. So what happens is now the freezer not getting that cold air starts to warm up and your ice cream starts to get soft. Well, we can't have that. So the solution to that, believe it or not, is to put a heater in the refrigerator to keep the freezer colder. All right, so you only really need one part for this thing. That's the heater itself. This is an Electrolux kit. The uh, Electrolux makes several different brands. Electrolux likes them, is like the master brand. And uh, my particular brand is a Frigidaire, but this fits, and it comes with instructions, and that's really all you need. The kit's uh, about 15 bucks. Picked it up from Amazon. You can find a link in the description, so there's not a whole lot to it. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some modifications, and what I've got for that is some wire, a toggle switch here, just a round toggle switch, and some shrink tubing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this black wire, splice the switch into there, solder. I'm going to solder it in, and then that way I can turn this heater on and off as the garage warms up, spring rolls around. You don't want this heater running continuously because then the refrigerator is just going to work more than it really needs to. It's only when the, the atmosphere in the garage is cold that you need to have the heater running. So you could take this apart as I, sh as I want to show you. Unplug this every year and do that. But uh, a little, little slicker to have a switch in there. So we're going to go that route. Got the refrigerator open here. This is the control box where you set the temperature and all that. This is what we're going to take this whole entire thing off. So you're going to need a couple hand tools for that. So I'm going to go ahead and get the top stuff out here and then pull that control box down. Now, obviously, the refrigerator is still on. You want to you want to unplug it so that you're not uh, playing with electricity. There's 120 volts in there, so you don't want to shock yourself. So we'll go ahead and unplug the refrigerator and go ahead and pull this panel off. So obviously, I've got the refrigerator off here. Two Phillips screwdrivers right about here and in the very back are quarter inch uh, sheet metal screws they look like. So I've got a, just a, a ratchet and a socket here. Go ahead and get the uh, screw, screws out. And I missed it. You've got two quarter inch bolts up in there as well. So that drops right down like that. And now you see obviously there's wires connected in there so I'll go ahead and get these wires out. Just two little pinch at the top. Two little, uh, where am I? Here I am. Two little pinch things. You just want to take those, pinch them in so you can see like that so you don't uh, break it. And essentially what where the heater is going to go is right Heater's going to go right in here. So we're going to go ahead and get it over to the bench, close the door, save some uh, cooling in there, and start the work. So the way this works is, is you've got your rheostat right here, this piece, and this is a timer here for the defrost. And we're essentially going to short this heater element into here, and then it's going to wrap inside that plastic right here. And it's going to heat that whole entire area up, and where your rheostat is and the sense is, it's going to figure out that it's too warm and it's going to let it run a little bit longer and therefore it's going to allow it to keep the freezer frozen. One thing to note here, this uh, timer, I pulled those two Phillips head screws out. Those only screw into that timer. They don't attach this thing to the to the ceiling at all. It wasn't required for me to do that to pull the, the box out, but it will be required because the heater element is going to fit down on this piece of plastic on there. So you will have to eventually get that off anyway. You can see in the heater element that there's holes here pre-cut out and that's going to fit around all the pieces of plastic mounting brackets and all that kind of stuff. Put a little black mark right there. That's the center of where the switch is going to go. So I'm going to drill a little pilot hole and then use a, a, wood, uh, a wood boring drill bit 
to go ahead and bring that out to three quarters of an inch. That's the diameter of the barrel of the switch that I got. Obviously, uh, you know, you get one shot at this. You don't really want to have to go out and buy a new one of these plastic things if you can help it. So this one takes a little bit of guts, I guess. But you know what? It's just a garage fridge. Not using a whole lot of pressure. I don't want to crack it. Plastic's probably not real great quality. Let's crack that. All right, so obviously when you get close here, you want to be careful. All right. Yeah, probably not the best drill bit to use, but it worked. All right, so the switch does have a little tab. You can see that right there. So I have a rotary tool. What I'm going to do is take the rotary tool, clean this hole up a little bit, and I marked a little black spot where the notch is going to go so that when the switch goes in, it mounts uh, straight up and down like this anyway. It also keeps my tabs in a good spot. Going to go ahead. I'll do that off camera just to kind of clean this up and, and make it pretty. All right, so I got the switch hole mostly flushed out there. I don't want to push the switch in yet because I'm afraid once I get it in, it's going to be a real bear to get back out. So now what I want to do is wire it up and go from there. So this is the rheostat that I pulled out. And like I said, I unclipped it so it makes it much easier to deal with. This is the one side of the wire. You can see it's got like a piggyback spade on it. So the black one's going to go into this one. It also, it kind of uh, as a little safety tip, I, I'm trying to only remove one wire at a time so I don't get confused. You can always take pictures of it. I did that as well so that you know where the wires lay out in here so that if you do get confused or you get messed up where you had stuff, at least now you know. So anyway, go ahead and take this, plug it in, and then put the piggyback on. So that's how the thing is going to get power and then through there, it's going to go to the switch. So I'm just trying to dry fit here to see if I've got enough room to do all this. I know the angle is not the best here. All right, so it looks like I'm going to be good there. So I'll, I've got the wire sticking out and I'm going to have to solder it just like that. And then I'll, the other wire, I'm going to probably put the heater pad in now, get that all arranged, get that all wired up and then wire in the switch and then push it back in and click it in. All right, so I got everything dry fit here. Everything looks good. More than enough wire sticking out here to be able to solder the switch to. So I'm gonna go ahead now and pull the heater element out, take the sticky back off, put it back in there and get it all set down and then go ahead, screw the timer back down so that that doesn't rattle around in there and then go ahead and get the switch soldered up. All right, well, thankfully, the sticky stuff is rather forgiving. All right, so now that's in there. I'm going to go ahead and screw this down, like I mentioned, wire the orange wire up, and then go and get this soldered. So I've got the switch all wired up here, along with the heating element, which you can see down in here. I'll show you real quick. The black wire is connected to this front one here. The orange wire is connected to this back one here, and the wire this brighter orange wire here that's coming from the heating element and the black wire down here that's coming from the other side of the heating element those plug into the rheostat and then there's piggyback spades on that that you plug the original orange wire and the original black wire right into so there's no cutting no soldering or anything like that that you need to do if all you're going to do is put in the heating element another reason potentially for the switch is these screws that hold this guy in are those self-tapping screws, so I'm sure there's only so many times that you're going to get that in and out before it starts to kind of blow itself out and, and destroy the plastic that it's screwing into. So you don't want to leave this thing on in the summer months. So you take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on. Eventually, I have a feeling those screws might strip out, and then you're not going to be able to get this thing attached at all anyway. So just something to think about. All right, there we go. Switch looks good. Goes clicky, clicky. And uh, now it's ready to get plugged in. A couple things to point out here. One, you've got a tube all the way in the back here, and you've got the little nodule on the 
thing. I assume that's like a defrost drain or something from the freezer. And then this is the vent that goes up into the freezer. So you want to make sure that that lines up with this in here and that it's not, uh, not caught in any way. All right, don't forget to plug it in. Should only go in one way. All right. And then your quarter inch screws. Much better off with a with a nut driver here if you have one. All right, don't need to go real tight with that. You don't want to crack any plastic or anything. There you go. So there's the switch. Actually works on off. The uh, things all mounted back up. Made sure to get that little drain hole in the back there. You can see. You can see that that goes in, so that's good. So now we'll go ahead, we'll plug it in and uh, see if I can tell that it works. All right, so now it's on. I'll turn the heater on. And what the uh, instruction manual says is you want your controls to be right about in the middle where you would normally keep them as if it was, you know, the spring or the summer. So I'll go ahead, like I said, I'll turn the switch on and I should be able to feel that start to warm up a little bit. So I'll go away, I'll come back and give it a little bit and go ahead and do that. All right, so after about 24 hours, looking at about 10 degrees max and about one degree minimum. Um, obviously, I got the door open now, so it's floating around a little bit, but that's about right. I got to uh, adjust the temperature a little bit to make it a little bit colder, but otherwise, it's definitely better than it was, which was about uh, 15 or 20 degrees maximum, only about 10 degrees minimum. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Well, quite a change of pace from restoring a 1964 Triumph TR4, but we've all got those little problems around the house that we like to fix ourselves save some money maybe so hopefully this uh, this video helped provide a solution for you so have a good rest of your day cheers